Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In the present section of atomic structure, we'll study the protons. Okay, we'll go into the discovery of proton and some of its properties. Let's start with the discovery of proton. How we first found out that there is particle called proton. The term was coined by Ernest Rutherford. It was named after another scientist, William Prout. All right. So the discovery of proton, you cannot exactly signify as being made by a one single scientist. All right. But C. William Proud was the first person who said hydrogen, in a way, is part of every other element that we know. Okay. He made those deductions based on atomic masses, and they were found out to be false after we were able to make accurate calculations about atomic masses. But later, when we discovered proton. we saw that in a way what he was saying was actually true okay though his deduction were based on different facts but the deduction came out to be somehow true okay and how we'll just look at it in a minute okay and that is why rutherford decided to name proton after william prout okay it was first supposed to be prout and that is p r o u t o n but it was then changed to proton by rutherford himself so what he did was see basically we already know about positive rays so now they knew that there is cathode rays that is negative rays which are formed by an elementary particle called electron so cathode rays are nothing but stream of electrons so they thought similarly positive rays might be a stream of some other fundamental particle and they tried to carry out various different experiments more or less similar to those that were carried out for electron but they were not as successful and took them a lot of time okay more than a decade to actually come up with the proton all right so it was quite difficult why see electron we saw that electron had e by m ratio such that okay at the time of discovery of electron we saw that e by m ratio of cathode rays was such that it was independent of gas but since in case of positive rays e by m ratio varied with the gas taken okay the e by m ratio varied this made calculations quite difficult okay and this made interpretation of those calculations and analysis experiments quite difficult okay ultimately what they deduce was that the rays positive rays were actually not originating due to presence of metal electrodes but they were originating due to presence of gas that is the role of metal electrodes okay in formation of positive rays was only to the extent of supply of electricity that is electric field okay and that electric field we know is basically used for nothing but ionization okay we have studied this in case of cathode rays okay so electric field did nothing but ionize the gas and accelerate those ionized particles further so that they can move with high velocities in one direction so that is the extent of electricity here but electrons can also originate from cathode but that was not the case with positive rays because upon changing metal of the electrodes the positive rays didn't have any effect okay not necessarily at least not then when the experiments were first carried out but with change of gas they did so they decided that the origin of positive rays was ionization of this gas in the discharge tube so let's say if i have hydrogen atom let's say i took atomic hydrogen in gaseous form So atomic hydrogen will obviously be taken in gaseous form. So upon ionization, one electron gets knocked out, and what we are left with is H positive. Okay, that is the atom of hydrogen. Okay, has its electron knocked out, which means there will be a positive charge left because in all this H on the left hand side is neutral. So if we take out a negative charge, we will have a positive charge here. Similarly, instead of hydrogen, we can take a helium atom okay we can take atomic helium in a discharge tube again 
if we knock out an electron by ionization process we will be left with he positive okay in case of helium what we have is he positive particles in case of hydrogen what we have is h positive particles so now you see where the positive charge is coming from so these positive rays are actually made up of these H positive, H E positive, say N A positive, and so on. Right. So cathode rays were made up of this electrons. So these negative particles they run towards anode, but these positive particles they try to run towards cathode. That is why if we change the type of gas, the E by M ratio of positive rays changes because the particle itself is getting changed. while the negative particle electrons remains same irrespective of the gas all right so h positive h e positive both have same positive charge that is e is same one positive one unit positive charge but m is different and hence e by m ratio will change in fact for h e positive okay we now know for h e positive another electron can be knocked out Okay, another electron can be knocked out. So we already have H positive here. If we knock out another electron, we will be left with H two positive. So now we have also changed the value of E on this particle. Okay, we have also changed the value of E on this particle. So we have H positive. We can have H positive traveling towards cathode, or H E positive, or we can even have H E two positive. In which case, both E and M. Have change with the gas taken. Right. Similarly, instead of atomic hydrogen, we can have H two. That is molecules of hydrogen, and we can try and knock out electrons from those molecules. Again, E by M ratio will change. Okay. So now we understand why positive rays were dependent on the gas taken inside the discharge tube. So once we know that, let's directly go on to the fundamental things. all right so after making several calculations with several different gases what they found out was that e by m ratio was maximum okay e by m ratio was maximum when the gas inside the tube was hydrogen so when we took atomic hydrogen e by m ratio was maximum so this led to the deduction that mass of hydrogen is lowest so this led to the deduction that the fundamental particle forming positive rays always is some multiple okay may be integral may not be integral but some multiple of the h positive ion okay so h positive is the particle in a way present in every other atom at least its e by m ratio suggests that okay. so that is why the first time when proton was discovered or there was some signs of presence of a particle like proton it was actually h positive atom okay or this is now we know as nucleus of h positive hydrogen that is h positive which they were talking about okay so this is what they discovered that positive rays are some form of h positive atom and even today proton are still sometimes referred to as or denoted with the symbol h positive after these several experiments were made to calculate the exact value of charge and mass we won't go into the details of those all right but let's try and understand in a rudimentary way what is proton so see if we can somehow maintain that every discharge tube gas that we take has only one electron knocked out then we can ensure that charge on each of those gas is same okay that is one positive charge not two positive charge if we can ensure that only one electron is knocked out from one atom so we can ensure that e is constant okay and once we can calculate this value of e we can very well say that our particle okay the common particle in each of the gas has this charge of e okay so only problem will be calculation that is calculation or magnitude of the charge okay so now maintaining that only one positive charge is taken in the ionized gas we can also make calculations for m right and in this case it was found that mass is lowest for h positive atom 
so hence what they said was h positive atom is made up of okay h positive particle it is actually nucleus of hydrogen atom so h positive particle is nothing but a proton particle so from here let's go on to the details of proton its properties all right we don't have to go into further detail of this experiment okay it's completely out of our syllabus or course structure that we are following so proton it is denoted by p small p or p positive okay because it carries a positive charge and like i said it is sometimes still denoted by h positive okay in some places very rarely okay very rarely you can also find it denoted as e positive okay this is actually not the right way so you don't follow this don't write proton as e positive sometimes it is written this way we'll only write it as a p or h positive most of the time next it is not an elementary particle so when it was discovered obviously they had deduced that it is an elementary particle that is elementary particles are those particles which cannot be divided further okay so proton obviously they are common to each and every atom that we know okay this is still true but what is not true is that proton cannot be further divided for electrons it is still true electrons cannot be further divided at least not by the science that we know today but protons not now we know can actually be divided that is they are actually formed by three quarks these quarks each have a charge of approximately we can say e by 3 okay we don't have to go into that that is not part of our studies here so it is not an elementary particle remember that it is present in all the atoms of every element okay so it is still common to each and every atom but it is not elementary it is 1840 times more massive than electron so once exact value of the mass of proton was calculated it was found that it is 1840 times more massive okay so it is very heavy and for hydrogen atom it was found that now we know that hydrogen atom okay when we knock out the electron what we are left with h positive okay so this particle contains only one proton in it okay this particle h positive contains only one proton in it there is no neutron there is no electron hence the mass of h positive is equal to mass of one proton particle it has same charge as an electron okay so one common and important thing that we discovered is that the fundamental unit of charge remains same that is the magnitude of charge on electron is same as magnitude of charge on proton only difference is sign so proton is positively charged but it still carries the same charge as an electron so that is the lowest charge value that we use okay not talking about quarks or other particles like quarks so in magnitude terms you have to remember this property of proton value of charge is same as electron in magnitude but with positive sign so it is plus 1.6 multiplied with 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs okay so this is in si unit again in cgs unit we use electrostats units so in that it will be plus 4.8 multiplied with 10 to the power minus 10 esu electrostats units and again this is the fundamental unit of charge so it is often referred to as one unit charge so if you have one proton we can say you have one unit charge okay with you so if you have three protons it means you have three unit charge so every charge that you commonly come across is nothing but some integral multiple of this charge value this e hence it is one unit charge so you might have three unit charges five unit charges but not 3.5 or 2.5 unit charge you cannot have that you cannot have 2.3 2.7 unit charge all right the value of mass of a proton so we are not going into its discovery and exact calculations but you have to remember this value at least till two decimal points that is 0.67 it's better if you remember it up to 3 okay we'll see why but value of mass proton of proton is 1.673 multiplied with 10 to the power minus 27 kg okay and if you remember the mass of electron was of the order 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay and this is 10 to the power minus 27 kg so mass of proton is much much higher than mass of electron so 
that's it once you have remember this value that will be it for your proton studies okay that is all we need to know about proton right now okay in next sessions we'll go into further detail about protons okay and one important thing i want you to note over here is that see this is the value of mass of proton if you try to write it in grams it will be around okay approximately it will be 1.67 multiplied with 10 to the power minus 24 gram okay just remember this value for now because in the next session okay when we study neutrons i will make an important deduction over here okay significance of this mass of proton what is actually significance of this and how we are going to use it later on in our studies okay so just remember it for now and until next time okay so until then keep studying and try and revise this stuff and remember the values that I have told you to remember okay so once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos